In my recent video entitled Understanding the Recent Spike in Global Surface Temperatures, I noted that the apparent spike in global surface temperatures that began in 2023 was caused by a rare three-year-long La Nina event followed by a relatively strong year-long El Nino event. The La Nina phase led to colder ocean temperatures which allowed excess heat in the atmosphere to be absorbed in the upper reaches of the oceans for about three years. When the El Nino Southern Oscillation weather pattern shifted from La Nina to the warm El Nino phase, that excess heat was released back into the atmosphere, creating a rapid, almost unprecedented rise in global average surface temperatures. While these factors likely explain most of the increase in global average surface temperature that began in 2023, a recently published paper in the journal Science shows that about two-tenths of a degree centigrade of the total eight-tenths of a degree jump in global average surface temperature was caused by a decrease in low-level cloud cover over various parts of the Earth. The recent article in the journal Science notes that a decrease in the amount of low cloud cover in the mid-latitudes may be increasing the recent spike in global average surface temperature by as much as 25%. The reason for this is that a reduction in cloud cover lowers the Earth's albedo, so less incoming sunlight is reflected directly into outer space. This adds to the warming of the Earth's surface to ensure that there is a balance between incoming and outgoing solar energy. This chart from Gessling's paper in Science shows how three of the Earth's parameters have changed over the past quarter century. The top figure, figure A, shows how the surface temperature of the Earth has changed during that period. The scale on the left shows the latitude from minus 60 degrees south to plus 60 degrees north. The scale on the right shows the temperature change in degrees centigrade or Kelvin. The reddish areas on this chart indicate regions where surface temperature has been increasing, while the bluish areas indicate regions where surface temperature has been decreasing. Clearly, surface temperatures have been increasing fairly rapidly since about 2015. Chart B shows the corresponding values of solar radiation absorbed in these regions. In this chart, the reddish areas are experiencing increasing absorption of solar radiation at the Earth's surface. Well, the bluish areas show decreasing values of absorbed solar radiation. Note that the scale on the right is in watts per square meter. And chart C shows the trend in the amount of low cloud cover since the year 2000. Note that the reddish regions are areas with reduced low cloud cover while the bluish regions represent areas with increasing low cloud cover. Also shown in this chart are the time and duration of El Nino events that have occurred since the year 2000. As you can see from chart C, the significant decrease in low cloud cover started well before the onset of the 2023 El Nino event. The authors of the science article note that three fundamental mechanisms may have contributed to the record low planetary albedo associated with reduced low level cloud cover. These include first, internal variability associated with long-term weather patterns, b, an emerging low cloud feedback effect like what is happening in the Arctic from the loss of sea ice, and C, the effect of reduced aerosols in the atmosphere resulting from new restrictions on emissions from ocean-going ships. 
more research will be needed to determine the degree to which each of these is contributing. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments section of the video, and I will do my best to respond. Please also take some time to watch some of my other videos on climate change. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. And keep in mind that climate change is real and that it presents an existential threat to our children and grandchildren, regardless of what some politicians may say or do.